Rejoice, my friends. There are 100 free shards coming your way. And in this video, I want to talk about what you need to do to influence which shards you're going to get. Also, what are the lowest levels that you could have your raid teams in order to fully sim the incursion raids? We got the scientific results that we're discussing and we're counting down the best characters you use your dark promotion credits on along with the rest of your mailbag questions if you're ready for all of that valley club you know what to do find that like button and let's go smash it valley Flyer. hello 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 what is up valley maniacs welcome back to the valley flying channel I'm Valid Flying. Hope you're having a great day. And in this video, we are counting down the best characters to use your dark promotion credits on. We're also talking about the best raid teams. How low can you get these raid teams in order to fully sim these incursion raids? But before we get to all that and your mailbag questions, I do want to give you a reminder. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. We are back from vacation, fully producing these videos for you to help you in Marvel Strike Force, at least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week. To help you, guide you, answer your questions, give you guides on which characters they're the best to use. And the weekly news update is returning this week. Let's talk about what you need to do to influence which 100 free character shards you are going to get. And there's a poll right now. I'm going to put a link to this poll. Thank goodness uh, we have Beta Red Bill interacting with the community. And we got a bunch of characters that he has, uh, he has given the opportunity to choose. Obviously, he can't choose all the characters like Kang and vol and certain other characters but some of these other characters look like good choices we have our death seed characters here we have our uh invasion team here and we have our uh dark our new new warriors here but i think i'm gonna pick this nowhere team these three characters from the nowhere team because it's been announced that they are gonna lead to a legendary character so actually we got four there so um i'm gonna get uh corks i guess let's 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 go with uh, cosmo starter alliance annihilation and thor there those are the characters that i'm gonna pick let me know who you pick but with all that said it is time to answer your questions to catch up on a lot of these mailbag questions we haven't done one of these since we were in a haunted castle back in dingwall scotland it's been many weeks since then so this time to catch up and get you all the latest in Marvel Strike Force. Hey, Valley, when are the Apocalypse Horsemen coming back around? It's been like forever since Morgan Le Fay. Uh, the author, the orbs they have to offer are garbage. And I agree, they are garbage orbs. Don't, don't, don't uh, get impatient and buy these orbs. That's what they want you to do. They want you to get impatient and use your resources ineffectively, buy these orbs and get some character shards. Hopefully they will be around soon. We've been asking the question in the Envoy chat for months and months and months and usually they're pretty good about giving us answers to the question especially with the more interaction that we've had with the player's voice but for some reason we're holding back and answering this one so i'm not sure maybe it was answered in a little question here or there since the uh since uh since i was gone i, I still have to catch up on a lot of these questions i do hear that we're gonna get some announcement in the blog today when these will be permanent but uh that that is more rumors than anything that uh not, not only really finalized that that i've seen the devs announced anyway all right this is in question I wanted to bring your attention scopely list the price which you expect to pay and when you go to the price they raise the price i'm sure a lot of people have paid extra this is false advertising and ripping off their consumer base so if we look at this this looks like this is from the web store there and we see a price of 24.99 and 49.99 and we see this next screenshot here going for 27 so it looks like they've added that tax to that is where uh, you're getting the different price and i think mr Jamie says that price is without tax most likely yeah so i think with the web store they do add that tax the price they show is before tax and uh yeah, unfortunately in some regions you have to pay tax i'm thinking maybe some regions you don't but yeah most regions you have to pay the tax and i think that's what the price discrepancy is my brother i'm a raid question been leveling up rebirth recently i've been trying to finish the first bio mission and incursion 1.2 they get clobbered every single time is there a certain kill order on that node or is a certain placement i need to rebirth so with some of these teams and i'm finding especially with rebirth and with the skill with the invader teams sometimes simming it is a lot better because especially with the invaders a lot of times they uh the timeout so simming it has been a lot better we did a very unscientific poll on the valley club this morning what are the lowest teams that people are using to sim these incursion raids and uh this is this is the answers that i got so with full sim uh i've seen a death scene and i'm not sure if this is my disc i think it was someone on chat they were able to sim 1.3 with a 933k 
Death Siege. So it doesn't take a huge investment in Death Siege to get that full sim. Obviously, with the sims, sometimes they fail. Sometimes they work well. I mean, I've had this, uh, my Rebirth team fully sim every single node, but then even the boss node, and sometimes they die in that first node. So sometimes these sims will go well, sometimes they don't, but that seed, 933K to sim 1.3, and I've heard a 1.25 to sim 1.4. If you guys have better results than this, means which means you've taken worse teams, lower power teams, and we're still able to sim, let me know in the comments. And obviously, you know, they're, they're not always gonna be consistent. Rebirth, I've heard a 990K, and this might've been my rebirth, or someone, I can't remember which ones are mine or someone's on chat, but a 990K, 1.3 million rebirth, able to fully sim that. Uh, and yeah, obviously not super consistent, but if you have a lower team that gives you pretty consistent results, and I'm talking like more than 80% win rate, let me know in the comments there. The skill invaders, or the skill, we have the invaders there, 750K and 1.3, 950K and 1.4, and for this mystic section with the Eternals, Morgan Le Fay, Deathpool, and Vault, well, all right, let's 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 try it. We'll do this for the content here, guys. All right, 1.3. Let's do it. Does this sim. It. Wait, it does, it does, okay. We have no two now. Does it sim? We're answering the question, guys. But your cooldowns are messed up. Yeah, let's. I know the cooldowns are messed up, but does the AI recognize the cooldowns are messed up? Let's try this one more time. We're gonna play our luck here. Ugh, did we get it? Took a long time last time. Does it matter? And oh my goodness, we got two. And then we took in that same team to try that boss note and it didn't go so well. I've heard though, that if you take out Spider Weaver, put in Loki, that team is able to fully sim it. Obviously with the AI, you don't know where the cooldowns are or anything. So some days will be better than others, but that is, we are one for one with all those. We'll try that a little more often on stream and see what the results are. But hopefully this helps you guys in the race. Let's get to the next question. Hello, hey Valley from Singapore. I have two questions regarding the recent updates. Firstly, do you think the raid keys change they gave with a lump sum of raid keys needlessly complicated? Surely it would have been more logical to just do away with the raid key system and allow alliances to start raids every 24 hours instead. Yes, that would seem more logical, more simple. I'm sure there was some reason that Scopely kept that in there. Maybe they wanted us to log in. Maybe they needed to track if the alliance members were logging in and have that... Uh, Go there. I think I think it's just a login period. But yeah, they it could have been way more simpler. They could have done it better. I'm glad that they finally listened to the community because this is something that we've been wanting for a while. So I'm I'm happy it's here. But yeah, it could have been a lot better. Secondarily, uh, Scopely mentioned there'll be no gold and training orb events in July. Do you think this is a ploy? Make Scopely open all the orbs we've had saved so they can reintroduce these uh, orbs once again to the community uh, once they've run out of orbs. Now that would be a very bad look because. What they did, they announced this in response to these hoarding events, which was something that the community didn't like in response to a lot of feedback they got from the player's voice council, things like that. So it would be it would be a very bad look for them. All the players that they would have won back the trust from from doing something like this, they would have just eroded that and it could have caused players or it could cause players to stop playing the game because like, hey, you just told us one thing and you didn't do and you just uh, went back on that like a month later. So I don't think they're gonna do that because it would be very, they would be shooting themselves in the foot long term. They managed to control the energy that we're getting and the credits we collect with auto claim features. Now they're trying to control the number of orbs we can get. And again, if you look if you look at what they're doing at face value, they did say that they tried to reduce that so that they didn't have to use that in their calculations for future events. And I, I haven't had too much trouble completing these events, even on holidays. So I, I'm I, I'm assuming it got better, but I haven't really delved into the numbers since I went away and since I got back. But I, it seems just as a player, it seems easier. They're awfully specific. They stayed in the blog post late July so they can reintroduce it. I'm, and again, I'm, I'm looking at more of the bright side of this. Obviously, everything you say can be correct and they may have some nefarious means, but I... I I want to look at it at face value and, and, and have a little more happiness and enjoy things a little better. I, I believe that they did that though, but just that's when the timing of the player's voice council was giving them the feedback. They drafted that letter and I think it's more had to do with the timing of that rather than being late in July so they could do that stuff. 
furthermore, this is not the first time that we heard this. It is going to be mentioned that they were not going to do any orb opening events anymore previously. Only the blatant light our faces introduce a record number of orb opening events each month. So this was, I think that a lot of the community is confused with this because I did go back and look for this specific statement. The only thing that I found that they did say this was in a envoy message that was in a private message that Cerebro wrote that said like, we're not wanting to do these things. I don't think that message was ever meant to be shared publicly because obviously, yes, it didn't uh, hold true to that, but that was not a public communication. That was something that uh, Cerebro said to the, or at least what I could find. I didn't find anything publicly that they stated no more old but events, only that the communication in Discord that Cerebro shared that I guess wasn't supposed to be shared. But yeah, now that they're saying this publicly that there's no gold and training match events, They've said that publicly. I'm going to hold them to that. I'm going to be very upset if they don't do that in the future. But uh, yeah, the previous one, I think they, they, it shouldn't have been shared. You think Scopely is trying to trick us into opening orbs again? Should we hoard our opening orbs? So this is what I'm going to do. I guess this is a long question. What should you do with your orbs? That's the long and short of it with this question here. Uh, I am when I'm needing gold and with the influx that we've gotten with more uh, gold that we're getting in war rewards, things like that. I haven't really needed a lot of gold and I haven't really needed to open orbs, but I'm going to open them 10 at a time whenever I need gold. So this that's what I'm going to do when I need gold, when I'll start opening them. But until then, they're just going to sit in my inventory. Same with my training mats. I haven't really needed to, to open the training orbs, but yeah, I'm going to open them as soon as I need them. I'm not going to be hoarding them, but I'm going to be opening them like 10 at a time. And I'm not just going to open them all at once when I need gold. And I think that's more of a way for me to budget rather than me to like just to have like 20 million gold sitting out there that I can spend, spend, spend. It's it's more for myself. So if you're a little more disciplined myself, then you just open them all. But if you're less disciplined, then maybe you can open them 10 at a time like that. And the next question is about these dark promo credits, the best way to use them, the best characters. I think this is a good final topic. So I do want to save this one for the end. We won't come back to this though. And I'll give my ranking on each of the best characters to use your dark promo credits on. Hey, Valley, big fan of the changes from the Marvel's Player's Voice movement is making. I do have a slight concern. Leaderboards used to be the primary way to earn ISO 8 Blue Fives in a meaningful manner for those able to do that well, at least. Uh, with the reduction of the leaderboard events, they've discussed new ways to get more Blue ISO 8 Five available. I, I've seen a little bit more of the ISO 8 Five available. Uh, the leaderboard events, they are reducing that. That is a good thing, and I hope they infuse more of the ISO 85 and other things. I think this week will be telling. I think we're going to be getting some orbs that's supposed to be containing more ISO 85. We don't have the orbs in the game yet. Uh, they may go out as you're as you're watching this video, but as me recording this video, orbs aren't in the game yet. And I think that's going to be very telling to see how they're going to be introducing this ISO 85 in our inventory. Because yeah, the leaderboards, they did kind of suck, but they were our primary way to get this ISO 85. So. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that just, just not to anger the community more than it's already done. I'm guessing that they're having the feedback and are going to introduce a meaningful amount in a way that everybody can get. And I, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers on that one. I hopefully, hopefully I'm right on that one. All right, next question. Hey, Valley, random question. Why is Moon Knight the only character in the game with a negative block chance or negative stat in general? Uh, also, I noticed he's the only character that has an attack that does have a range of damage for his ultimate. It feels like they made a couple pieces this kid means at this point. And if we go into the game and look at Moon Knight, it's not just a bug in your device, my brother. Yeah, my Moon Knight also has that negative 1,000 block chance. So whatever not blocking is, uh, uh, like letting any any hits come in extra more, I guess if that makes sense, uh, that's what he's doing. He's, he's not blocking at all. That is a weird thing. And I do like that he has this damage range. I just... Uh, I guess it wasn't popular. Moon Knight wasn't super popular when they introduced him uh, to the game and they never really followed up with this, but I kind of like that they did that. It just seems like a wasted opportunity they had with this. But uh, yeah, that negative block chance, I, <laughs> I guess most people aren't even caring about Moon Knight at this point to even go back and look at this or the devs. It's like, yeah, it's Moon Knight. Uh, does, he has negative block chance. It's fine. <laughs> Anyway, hey Valley Fine, it is the Blitz King. What is up, my brothers? Wondering, instead of those measly 10 to 15 Blitz credits per win, why not just add 5,000 gold for each Blitz win? It'll make the rotations a little more bit bearable. The Scopely Cavemen don't know how to make a one-time Sim Blitz button. The gold crisis is over and over. 
Let's keep pushing for more ways to earn gold. Yes, I agree with that. More gold, the better. I mean, I haven't opened my gold orders, haven't needed them, but yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to more gold uh, in the game. You know, I, I, more gold is better. That's we have so many bottlenecks. Reduce that one bottleneck. I don't think it will make a difference in the profits of Scopely too much. But yeah, that'll that'll make these blitz wins a little more exciting and uh, or or have a range. You know, instead of five thousand, make it between four thousand and ten thousand or something like that. So you get that little jackpot or 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 make it really low and then have a higher end jackpot or something like that but yeah it'd be nice a sim button i think they still are relying on that metric of player logging in as a as a as a good metric that the game is healthy because players are logging in even if they're not having fun with blitz sim so uh hopefully they add that in and stop looking at that as blitz as that metric because i don't think anybody really enjoys blitz i have a, a red star dark promo credits is zombie iron man worth at five red star dark promo credits or should i wait to the horseman teams to six red stars six red stars with the dark promo credits i will answer that question a little later but a hint i wouldn't use too many uh, dark promo credits on zombie iron man i don't think that character is worth the use of dark promo credits and hey valley i know with the recent changes that brought back up some content creators that recently quit like pathfinder i'm glad that he's back con is back as well has anyone reached out to other former msf that been out of the game Gage if they have any interest in coming back due to the recent changes such as Wolver Thor, Tony Skunjili. Uh, I know Goofy's not interested in returning uh, or even going back a few years to people like Chewburger. I know Chewburger had a real job and I know it was like in the medical industry. And so I, I guess he got busy because I haven't seen him make other content in other games. Wolver Thor is still going strong with uh, Marvel Snap. I'm not sure what Tony's doing, but before I left, he said he had a, another channel that uh, didn't feature his name or anything like that that was doing really well. So maybe he's working on that. But I hope all of them are doing really, really well, uh, whether they come back to Marvel Strike Force or not. But let's talk about dark promo credits. It's one of the more rare resources in the game right now. What are the best characters that you can take up with your dark promo credits? And these are the tiers that I think the, you, these characters are in. So this is the top tier. It would definitely takes any of these characters to six dark promo credits if you had enough resources for that. Definitely take all of these characters in these top two tiers to five with the resources. These are the characters I would take consider taking to six. And if you have an abundance of dark promo credits, you could even take some of these characters to seven. Red Hulk, in my opinion, is the top character with dark promo credits. Morgan Le Fay is up there as well. Still very, very relevant in the arena meta and in the Cosmic Crucible meta. And as you saw earlier in the raid section meta as well, even before this full Bifrost team is there, Archangel is there because of the use in the Incursion raids as well. Death Seed uh maybe very good simming at some of the lower level raids but as you may have seen with mobile gamers video that uh, we uh, talked about the other day they get wiped out at 1.5 1.6 if you don't have them uh with all those stars on them so top tier right here these are the characters that i would consider taking to uh definitely to four stars definitely to five stars if you got them and if you have an abundance of dark promo credits you can take them even further than this but dormammu is in that uh very very good value in all game modes pretty much don't really use them in arena but is kind of annoying on arena defense or some categories uh, when i see that character there rogue is used every day by myself on arena offense and arena defense doom you get annoying in arena uh defense as well and nova is gonna be used for the next legendary character it's not been announced who this next legendary character is but nowhere is gonna be required so Nova is kind of a team that you're, a character that you're going to need for the Nether Legendary. Quicksilver, Ultron, I would take these confidently to the gear tier or Red Star level three. You can put more Red Stars on Quicksilver if you're getting a lot more use. Uh, with that question specifically that we did skip over, a person was not getting a lot of use out of Quicksilver. But if you are, you could take Quicksilver to five. Ultron, you may want to hold off on Ultron right now. They're kind of pigeonholed into just being in Wakanda. But as we start to open up more theory crafting in season four of Cosmic Crucible, well, that Master of the Evil may get even more value. And then the last two characters that I probably would not put any, use any dark promo credits on, Zombie Iron Man. A character is more defined by Hela, how big your Hela is, how big your, how strong your Hela is. If you have a Zombie Iron Man that does decent damage, it's nice, but that's a character that's constantly dying. So I wouldn't be investing my precious dark promo credits in the zombie iron especially with these other characters that are so uh more important ultimus uh no do not use any red stars on ultimus uh not a good character and you're not going to get your value back from that but that is it guys we got another video coming out today that one about cosmic crucible how to beat some of the new 
defenses that I was seeing and what my new defense is going to this season of Cosmic Crucible. If you want to check that out, that video will, will be out later. But if you want to check out the discussion that I had with Mobile Gamer about what the future of Marvel Strike Wars is, is it too late? All these awesome changes the dev made, is it just in time for them to turn around Marvel Strike Force or is it too late? If you're interested in any conversation, check out the video that we did on Saturday. But if not, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Hulk fist bump. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be flying out.